welcome back to my channel. But if you're new here, my name is Faith. I am a mom to an 11 month old with another on the way. And I do this Jesus for Mommies series on my channel. It's basically just a time for us to, you know, so often us moms get on YouTube and we've just crashed on the couch or on our bed. It's nap time, whatever. We have a few moments to ourselves and we crash. We didn't get time with the Lord today. We didn't do anything for ourselves, anything to refuel us. We've just been pouring out on our kids all day long. And so Jesus for Mommies is a series that I've made on my channel to help bring the gospel and like gospel encouragements to mommies and just help start a conversation that's uplifting, um, God glorifying and encouraging between other Christian moms. And so if you're new here, consider subscribing. I do a Jesus for Mommies video about every week so far. I might do it more often or less often. We'll just see. But for right now, um, that's what I'm kind of doing. And today's topic was requested by a few people in the comments. And so if you requested this, thank you so much for commenting and asking for it. So um, today I want to talk about modesty. Modesty is such a hot topic. <laughs> Let me fix my tank top while we talk about this. So modesty is such a hot topic among the Christian world and um, people love to give their opinion on it. And so I'm super hesitant talking about this, but it's something that's been requested and I don't get a lot of requests. I'm a small YouTuber, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what you ask. <laughs> so today I'm making a video about um, Jesus for Mommies and what does Jesus say about modesty? First things first, this is a very practical topic, so I'm not going to use as much scripture in this video, but scripture does give us an overall worldview and insight into how we're supposed to talk and feel about this topic. We know that our bodies are temples. We know that our bodies and the way that we live is, um, we're called to be an offering unto the Lord. Hebrews 12, one through two, talk about giving your body as living sacrifices unto the Lord, living your life, running the race that's set before you and doing doing it all as a living offering unto the Lord. And so we can come from that worldview of how can we live our lives that includes dressing our bodies and dressing our bodies to live that life. And how can we do that as a living sacrifice unto the Lord? Now, um, on the other super practical end of that, I think no matter what, if anybody ever is going to give you hard and cut fast lines about never wear tank tops, never, you know, wear pants, you know, anything like that, they're in the wrong because my Modesty, by like very definition, necessitates you to know your culture and your timeline and yourself. And so if anybody's ever going to say overall women should never do blah, 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 they're coming from a very small worldview and they don't quite understand modesty. So let me talk about that. Modesty comes down to a lot of different things. It comes down to dress, but it also comes down to, are you being modest with the way you spend your time? Are you being modest with the way that you spend your money? Are you being modest with what your brain is consuming, what your eyes are consuming, what your ears are consuming? Modesty is a heart nature. And so I think it really comes down to when you evaluate yourself, are you being honest and standing before at the foot of the cross in light of what Christ has done for us and saying, God, how am, am I being modest with how I spend my life? I think that is the heart of modesty. But when it comes to clothes, I have lived in many different places. I grew up as a Dallas, Texas girl. For a short time, I lived in Pennsylvania. Then I moved to college um, on Lookout Mountain, Georgia. I went to Covenant College. <laughs> then my husband and I have moved to South Carolina. Um, and so I've been in the South. I mean, Pennsylvania isn't the South, but I've been in the South the majority of my life. And I would have, I definitely guessed at the beginning that all of those areas would be very similar in modesty and that the culture there would be very similar. Oh, I also spent a summer in Ethiopia. So Africa, that's a different, You, I bet you can guess that so that's very different. Um, so anyway, all of those cultures were very different. And let me just be frank with you, all of the, the cultures in that area, their take on modesty was very, very different. So um, growing up in Texas, what would be modest there would be actually immodest where I live here. What the average modest Christian girl was taught and advised by her mother to wear in Dallas is actually immodest in rural South Carolina where I am here. At my college, um, there was also a different line of modesty there. It was a lot of young girls figuring out adulthood and you know how to buy and wear clothes. You know, you got a tight budget, whatever. Um, a lot of used clothes, a lot of thrifting, and then also the whole fashion aspect. Everybody's living together, seeing what everybody wears and what they sleep in and everything. And so um, there's a lot of comparison there in the college world 
and just different lines from Odyssey because you have people coming from all over the country, all over the world, and all presenting their own idea of what modesty means. And I think in the last couple years, um, a lot of people have taken different standings on, you know, women's roles in modesty. Is it the woman's responsibility to dress modestly in order to not tempt the men? Or is it the man's sole responsibility to um, guard his heart and not blame it on the woman inappropriately dancing? dressing we need to find a middle ground between there we have responsibility and so does the male and as a woman it's important to acknowledge that we are as john and stotzi eldridge talk about in their book captivating i'll put a link to that book down in the description box we are the pinnacle of creation we were the last thing that god um created we are very good this is very good and we need to acknowledge the fact that our bodies are very sensual and um, depending on the culture that you're in depending in the situation that you're in depending on your body type all of those things is gonna come down to your definition of modesty and so I am not here to say women should not be wearing pants and I'm not here to say um, you know you should never wear a tank top I'm wearing one right now you know um, but it's the culture and the context that you're in and you have to evaluate that for yourself in Dallas everything's bigger and glamier makeup and hair is bigger shorts are shorter and tank tops are out whether it's the hot Sun whether it's the historical culture whatever it is people dress differently there what is modest there what is considered to be modest is immodest here in South Carolina it's the same kind of climate but it's a different historical culture and people have been raised differently and have a different understanding of biblical modesty different understanding of biblical modesty and so when I moved here it was hugely eye-opening people didn't tell me flat out you're dressing immodestly but even though I had mold over my outfit and prayed about it and was really worried about dressing modestly it still ended up to be immodest because they have just different rules that I've had to learn uh, again I am NOT here to give you set black and white rules but I do want to say after I became a believer and really dedicated my life to the Lord and was really seeking the Lord I went through this big phase of praying through whether or not I as a woman felt called or felt the need to keep wearing pants or if I felt called to um, start wearing only dresses and skirts partly probably inspired by um, 19 kids and counting and other really modest missionaries in my life and the missionaries you know wore those skirts for the culture that they were in after praying about it for quite a long time and seriously thinking you know this is what I'm called to do I was convicted against it and um, after pursuing wise wisdom from other Christians really heard great arguments for how it would actually hurt my witness hurt my cultural impact on the world and kind of have hearts shut down because they just you know it's like you know you're ostracizing yourself unnecessarily from the culture of the world and we're called to be in the world but not of it we talked about that last week in my Jesus for mommies I'll link that up above so yeah I have been there too and prayed about that too but I would say it depends on your culture and so when I go home to Dallas and see my family for the holidays my entire wardrobe looks different it looks different and that's how it should be when I go to Sunday morning church here in South Carolina my outfit looks very different from when I go to church in um, look at mountain Georgia or when I go to church with my family in Texas um, and I think that's how we need to view it, and that's how we need to teach our daughters to view it modesty is cut and dry in that you don't like post naked pictures on the internet but also it's not cut and dry at all. It depends on your scenario, your situation, the context, the weather, your body. What may look modest on me may really not look modest on you because you have a different body type. We have to consider that. Um, if you are postpartum and you don't have the money to buy bigger sized clothing, your clothing might be extra tight and pull in places that you would probably say are immodest, but you don't have the money to buy the replacement clothes and that is okay and there's room for grace. Grace. <laughs> Grace. Hold up. Grace and modesty. So that's when I say we have a responsibility to understand that we are a beautiful creation. I heard it put this way one time. I, I think it was God Loves Ugly by Krista Black, another great book. I'll also put a link for that book down in the description box. Um, she talks a lot about her struggle with eating disorders. So if, it, if you have an interest in that, I would encourage you to read that. I'm pretty sure this is from that book. But she talks about 
Never have I ever heard about a man who saw a naked woman and turned her down. Think about that. If you were naked in front of a man, how, if ever, would a man turn away and not give in on presented sex, unless he was a Christian and married and all of those things. It is in the male nature to be attracted to a woman's body. And so we, as Christian women, need to keep that in the forefront of our minds. And our body is a temple, is valuable. We wanna steward it. Let there be surprise and mystery for our wedding night with our husbands. But also there is room for grace in that it is hot and sweaty and you're gonna be working outside and you may not be the most modest when you start sweating in, in that white t-shirt, whatever. I don't know, you're probably like gonna over-evaluate all the things I say. You have to evaluate your personal situation. This is not an easy conversation. This is not cut and dry. Overall, all women in North America need to wear this. Here's another great example. When I was in Ethiopia, which is in Africa. It's a wonderful country, have a huge heart for it. I was working with children and I had the classic Africa stereotype in my mind when I was packing for Africa. So I packed all long skirts. I didn't pack any tank tops, all, you know, very, very modest, loose clothing. And when I got there, I was shocked. It's its own country and its own culture. And so Ethiopia is different than what I thought. It's not, I don't know, Uganda where all the women dress in traditional African garb. I was in Addis Ababa, which is the capital of Ethiopia. It's pretty metropolitan. And um, women there were just what I would say immodest for South Carolina. Um, really tight clothing, like skin out, whatever. And um, it was different. It was completely different. The climate was different. Economics were different. What I thought the standard of modesty in Ethiopia was going to be was blown out of the water. And so I just want you to know and you to be convicted that when you're tempted to judge another woman, she might be coming from a different cultural context and not understand modesty the same way you understand modesty. And we have to give other women grace for that. And we also need to give ourselves grace for that. There was one day I spent like an hour crying and stressing over what I was gonna to wear to church. We were new here to South Carolina. I was learning the modesty rules here and I just felt so much pressure. There were so many comments that were given to me, blah, 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 that doesn't matter. But I was stressing over what to wear to church. We don't have a whole lot of money for me to go buy a whole new wardrobe for South Carolina. So that means layering things and you know, figuring it out, right? And I just, you know, freaked out over, you know, not needing, not wanting to have to buy all these new clothes, but also needing to figure out what am I going to wear on Sunday mornings? And so I finally picked out something. I felt pretty safe with the outfit and I get to church and someone makes the comment. It turns out I had spent all my time analyzing about the outfit, but my bra strap was hanging out in the back. And I didn't know it because all I had done was just focused on, are there long enough sleeves and is the dress long enough and I can't buy a new outfit, you know, I need to figure out how to make this work here, that I forgot to just turn around and see if my bra shop was hanging out the back. And in Texas, I mean, it's tacky, but it's not really something that I was taught as like is immodest. It just really opened my eyes of no matter how hard sometimes we try, we're still not gonna measure up to what other people say is immodest. But here's where the gospel meets in truth, in a life-giving truth, is Christ at the cross made us modest, pure, and clean. And so no matter how hard we try, we are always gonna end up failing in some way. But you know what? God says we are enough. And Christ on the cross, his death was the atonement for our sins. And what that means is the at one minute. We were made at one with God. I will never measure up, but Christ is enough for me. The true modesty is that we are now dressed with Christ's robe of righteousness. So his death on the cross paid for our sins. And now when God looks at us, he sees Christ because we're clothed in Christ's robe of righteousness. And so no matter how you fail, no matter how hard you work to try and dress appropriately, whatever, sometimes you're still gonna fail. And you know what? That's okay, because Jesus. Okay, my son just woke up from his nap. I gotta let you go. You guys have a wonderful day. And if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. I would love to hear from you in the comments. I always wonder who watches my videos. And um, so anyway, let me know where you come from, what your ideas of modesty are, maybe some rules or whatever you think. Um, I would love to hear some feedback. You guys are awesome. You have the sweetest people ever on YouTube. So thank you for being awesome. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a blessed day. Bye, stay faithful.